to Hi, my name is Rick Sanchez. I'm with a company called Tractor Tip Equipment, and what we have for sale here today is a uh, Cabelco SK210 LC. The LC stands for a long carriage machine as opposed to a short carriage machine. The benefit of that is that it helps you on lifting capacity and just overall stability with a machine when you're using it. This particular machine has uh, 4,818 hours on it currently. The uh, serial number of this machine is, um, we should have given it a better bath, but uh, it's a Y007-U6-3, uh, I'm going to leave that last digit blank. What we're going to do on this video is uh, we're going to talk about the mechanics of this particular machine, the first clip, the operating specs in the second, then we'll run it in the third. If you buy this machine or some of the others that I have for sale, we have some. We have a couple of big water tankers. We got some loaders, box blades. Um, we got a chip spreader over here. We got a big uh, CX 470. We got another loader over there. Anyway, point is, uh, if you buy this tractor from me or if any of the others that I have for sale, you're going to be dealing with Pro Provence, who's my right hand man. He's a guy running the camera right now. Price on a new machine like this these days is probably anywhere from 165 to 185,000. Uh, again, the hours on this machine are uh, 4,818 hours. Uh, it may accumulate a few hours because we do kind of use it around the yard and whatnot uh, for right now. Um, the weight, this machine weighs 48,000 pounds. The widest point are the tracks right there at 10 and a half feet. The tallest point on this machine is the top of that cab, which is nine foot eight inches when it's in transport profile. The transportation link, when it's all knuckled over and folded over like uh, in transport profile is 32 feet. As far as the history of this unit goes, this machine, like almost every machine we purchase, is an original owner Dallas, Texas machine. I say that because we don't work in a rust corrosive environment. Everything we do is, um, well, it's, we're 300 miles from the ocean and uh, far enough south that the only salt we see is the salt on our kitchen table and we try to stay away from that. So uh, the machine is essentially a rust-free machine. I mean, you'll see where the paint's flicked off and the rainwater's gotten to it, but it in no way, shape, or form is, is rust pervasive. Which that, that, a corrosive environment, it gets into the electrical connectors and all that other stuff. I mean, it's, it's hell on a machine. Point is, this machine is not that way. Um, just about every machine we purchase comes from one of about 30 different large contractor or municipality that we deal with here in the Metroplex. Um, this particular machine came from a guy that I've, we've done a lot of business with over the years. He's bought from us, we bought from him. He sold to us, we've sold to him. So, um. They've got an excellent maintenance program that rivals some of the best I've seen. We've been happy with all the machines that we purchased from these guys. And it should be said that before we purchase any machine, I send two mechanics out to go look at it. And if they say everything's okay with the machine, then I send Pro Provencio to go out and look at it. And if he says everything's okay, then I personally go out and I, I inspect the machine before I write a check. So these machines are four times vetted before uh, before we do anything. As far as options go, you can see this machine is equipped with a mechanical thumb. Now with uh, with another wet kit, you could convert this to a to a hydraulic thumb, but we're we're not going to do that. It's a mechanical thumb for right now. Like I say, you'd have to put a, a third valve on the. Uh, excavator to make it up which people do we're just not going to do it we don't have the time it also has high intensity work lamps right there those things are as bright as the sun 
which is real good for working at night. Um, it has outlets in the cab, but I'm, I'm not sure if those are 12 volt outlets. It's got two, uh, two outlets. I'll show them to you here in a little bit when I get in the cab, but I wouldn't uh, plug your, your phone into that until you figure out if it's, um, if it's uh, 12 volts or not. Um, all the fluid levels on this machine are where they should be. This machine is mechanically sound. Everything on it works. Uh, top speed on this unit is uh, four miles an hour. The undercarriage is about, I'd say about 85%. It's in pretty good shape. The final drives have got plenty of power, enabling them to counter rotate with no problem. The hydraulics are strong on this machine. There's no cracks or welds anywhere in the work equipment. All of the pins and the bushings are relatively tight. There's no deflection or any kind of problem in that Rotec bearing right there, that, that uh, in your swing circle. As far as this bucket goes, this bucket is a 54 inch bucket. It's a Strickland 54 inch bucket. This is a good bucket. It's 44 inches uh, from that point to this point right here, 44 inches. And it's uh, 60 inches deep. That thumb is probably a 60 inch thumb. I don't, I don't know, so, but it's somewhere around there. That bucket's probably about a two and a quarter yard bucket, wouldn't you say, bro? It was heaped? Yeah, I would say. Yes, sir. Maximum reach at ground level with this tractor is 32 feet from the end of the tracks there. The maximum dig depth is 22 feet the maximum dig height is 32 feet um, the maximum lifting at, at this point if this machine if this stick was perpendicular to the ground um, roughly about 15 foot out from the machine is 18,000 pounds at ground level now the further out you go and the higher up you go you know it kind of tapers off but that, that'll give you an idea. These shoes right here are 31 and a half inch shoes. They're wider than standard pads, which again adds to your stability. Um, there's 12 foot of track on the ground. Again, that's because it's a long carriage machine. The PSI rating is about 4.91. The drawbar pull on this tractor is uh, about 51,500 pounds, which is um, the drawbar pull is defined as the amount of weight a machine can push or pull in addition to its own. So in this case, it's 51,500 pounds. I'm going to jump up on the, in the cab here. I mean, in the, uh, well, I'll do, jump, do the cab too, but, uh, I'm going to get up on the engine, show you guys the engine here in a minute. We're going to run it. Uh, pro, you got anything else you want to add? No, it's a good running machine. Uh, Kind of like using it a lot. Yeah, we hate to see it go, but that's what that's what we do. Yes, sir. All right, so this is the engine here. This is a six-cylinder Mitsubishi engine. You can see the little turbo right there. Uh, this is a 150 net horsepower engine. A lot of people don't know this, but caterpillar excavators are built by mitsubishi and they have that same damn engine in them so uh for what it's worth um this machine has got a um 98 horsepower uh 98 gallon uh, fuel tank which will run you anywhere from 14 to 18 hours uh depending on your operation so uh well that's about it Okay, so this is the inside of the cab here. Here's your your gauges. They work just fine. I'll start those up here in a minute. This is your air conditioner. 
your throttle control, there's your ignition key, your radio, there's your seat. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up. It's kind of low on fuel. If your air conditioner works. It's, I don't know if you can see that, but it's, uh, oh man, dust in it. It's blowing, uh, that's, that's warm. So. I'll get it down a good ways and we'll, uh, turn the AC on. blowing cool but not cold so for what it's worth of course it's cold outside right now so that's pretty much it yes sir
Okay, so to set up the thumb, basically what you do is uh, take that pin out right there. See that? Pull that pin. Let it, let it down. And then we're going to move the excavator so that we can... I don't think that that's going to fit yet. You got to move the excavator up. So we're going to put that pin in there. And then he's going to jump in the cab. And we're going to lift the excavator up. So that we can put the other pin in. And basically the reverse of that is true when you uh, when you set it up and that stiff arm right there is uh, you just keep it in the box. Keep going. Oh. That's it. It's that simple. You gotta remember to put the pin in. On this side. That's it. There's your thumb.